the Ifugao rice terraces in northern Philippines were widely assumed to be at least 2,000 years old. Recent archaeological evidence suggests that they were constructed more recently. In Ifugao Tuwali mythology, Bugan and Wigan, the first Ifugao, established the first Ifugao village in what is now called the Old Kiawa village. That village was the center of resistance against attacks made by Spanish colonizers, who attempted but failed to conquer it. In 2012, a thriving village that existed at least a thousand years ago was documented by the Ifugao Archaeological Project. This film combines stories and archaeological findings to call attention to the role of the Ifugao in Philippine history. It aims to empower the future of the Ifugao. This is the story of Mahikan, an Ifugao boy who grew up to defend his people and protect his homeland. He and his family lived in a lowland village that was located in the Magat River Valley. He and his father loved to hunt. Deer and wild boar were among the animals that they hunted. With his father's men, they went to visit their relatives who had settled in the highlands. They brought the wild boar and deer that they hunted to share with them. They are also bringing some bad news. Their relatives settled in the valley sustained by two rivers, the Ibolao and Ambangal rivers. Located in the Cordillera region of northern Philippines, the place is now known as the Old Kiyama Village. Here, they originally cultivated taro on irrigated terraces. They also had access to goods from India and China, such as beads made of glass and stone, as well as stoneware jars. That night, Mahikan's father recounted the events that would soon change their lives. Strange white men had appeared near their homes in the lowland. The strangers gave a village gifts and told its people to worship a new god. The villagers were shown little figures which seemed to look like their own spirits. They agreed to worship the new god and offered the white men precious items, thinking that the strangers would go away. Because they knew what would happen to those who resisted. The white 
men were Spanish invaders. They raided villages, taking rice and other valuable items. They also took survivors as prisoners. Mohican's father and his men tracked them to rescue the captives. Spaniards would definitely send their punitive forces. They highly valued the wet rice produced by Mahican's village. Their lives were at risk. To defend themselves against the Spaniards, they would need to join their kin in the highlands and combine their political and economic resources. Just before dawn, Mahikon's group left the old Kiangan village to return home in the Magat Valley. Rice is central to Ifugao culture. Rituals and feasts are carried out to thank the gods for bountiful harvests, and the villagers were preparing to celebrate a successful one. <laughs> Such feasts and rituals also solidify community cohesion. Mahikon excitedly helped in the preparations for the feast. He went outside the village to gather herbs to culture the yeast in producing baya, the Ifugao rice wine. He came across animals important in the world of the Ifugao. But he was not prepared for an unexpected encounter. A mortally wounded man from their closest neighboring village. The village had been raised to the ground. Before drawing his last breath, he warned them that the Spaniards were on their way to their village. The baki, or if you call sacrificial rite, was conducted to prepare them against the coming threat. Mahikon's father decided that it was time to join their relatives in the Ifugao Highlands. <laughs> the women, children, and the old villagers left the head.
the villagers continue their migration. The Spaniards were getting closer and closer to Mohican's village. Warriors destroyed the main access to their village. Meanwhile, the villagers had reached the settlement in the old Kiangan Valley. But Mahikon was restless. The Spaniards found a way to Mahikon's village through an ally from a neighboring settlement. The Ifugao migration was a conscious effort that consolidated their political and economic resources, which enabled them to counter Spanish attacks. They shifted to wet rice cultivation in the highlands. The rice terraces served as venue for annual agricultural activities and rituals that reinforced community solidarity, which also kept alive the structures that define Ifugao identity and made resistance to Spanish conquest possible. The old Kian village was eventually burned after numerous Spanish attacks in the Cordillera. But the Spanish never secured a permanent foothold in the mountains. Thanks to the efforts of those who lived there and protected their homes, the shift to wet rice cultivation was key to resisting conquest. 